what, what's your situation as a school in relation to sort of requirements or whatever the government does? Um, so I think one of the things a bit typical in the Global South, maybe, mm-hmm. is that laws are not always enforced, especially when it comes to, say, laws around private schooling. For a little bit more than 60 years, the law has not allowed any private schools to be established. Mm. But nevertheless, because there has been a demand, people have started schools. Mm. And the net result really of it is that they are not registered in any single place. The Ministry of Education doesn't know exactly how many of them there are or how Mm. many children there are. They don't have the authority to go to such a school and say, can I see if your teachers are certified or qualified? Because as far as the ministry is concerned, they're not at school. So it's a bit unfortunate because it also means, I mean, Sri Lanka is not very big on zoning laws or things like that, but Mm. even the inspection of, okay, is this building safe to have this many people? If there was a fire, can this, can all, is there adequate ways for these people to escape? So, I mean, even if you had the zoning law, you can't enforce it because this is still not a school. This is, I don't know what it is. Right. So we are also, in that sense, operating on the edge. But UNESCO says that the South Asian region is the region with the highest amount of private education in school going age. So according to the estimate in Sri Lanka, about 10% of students are in non-government schools. Mm-hmm. And then the percentage is way higher in India. And this is, I think, because education has been underfunded by the government so people who have money have better opportunities by not remaining stuck with the government system so there are more and more children in unregulated private schools so we are also in that sense an unregulated school so there are i mean in one sense it means it's easier to get things started Mm -hmm. because you don't have to deal with the red tape or anything like that but the downside is that it appears risky for some parents because, right. you know, okay, first of all, they're talking some very weird thing of democratic <laughs> education and all this stuff. And then on top of that, they're not actually recognized as a school. Like, so it, it's it's an additional hurdle for parents to overcome when they are considering this as an option for their family. This is the Agentic Schools podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world for children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg.